Good morning. So this morning I've got an interlocution from Jesus about the intensity of his love and how he wants to be intensely joined, unified to us in all aspects of our lives. So here goes. My children, it is difficult for you to understand that my love for you is so intense that I want to transform every aspect of your lives. Many of you, my children, are still so afraid to talk to me in prayer about intimate things like sexuality. This causes you much pain, shame and confusion. My little ones, do you not realise that I made you and know each one of you intimately at every level of your being? Do you not know that my love and desire to be unified with you is greater than any sexual desire or attraction? My children, many of you misuse your sexualities because you are looking for intimacy and love in the wrong way. I desire, my children, to be more intimate with each one of you than what you could experience in any sexual act. I desire you to know me and to love me with your hearts and not just an intellectual knowledge. I desire you to experience my love through the power of the Holy Spirit and for you to fall madly in love with me, just as I love you. My children, come to me and open your hearts wide. Bring to me in prayer, especially those intimate areas that you so often find difficult to talk about. Allow me to love you and to free you from all unnecessary guilt and shame and bring you into the true freedom of being children forever cherished and loved by your God. Well, what to say? That is a very intense message, a very beautiful message, and yet a very real message. And as I was receiving this message yesterday, I could feel the real gentleness, but also delicacy of Jesus. Because you see, sexuality, spirituality, these are very delicate, sensitive topics. And Jesus wants to enter into every single aspect of our lives, including our sexualities. Yet he doesn't want us to misunderstand what he's saying, as if somehow he's telling us that it's okay to go off and have sex with everybody, because that's not what he's saying at all. But what Jesus is saying is that our sexuality is something that he made us with. And he says that. My little ones, do you not realise that I made you and know each one of you intimately at every level of your being? And you see, Jesus knows all that because he made us that way. And so in times past, you see, there was a lot of shame around talking about sexuality. If you even had a sexual attraction or attraction to someone, it was almost considered like it was your fault. And even in church circles, as a result, people at times were oppressed, they were afraid to talk about it. If they spoke about it to a neighbour, if they spoke about, about it to someone, they could be judged. Having a temptation was almost the same way as doing the act. And see, so this wasn't pleasing to Jesus. Because you see, Jesus wants to free us to be able to talk about these things. Number one, of course, to him, which he's asking for in prayer. But number two, afterwards, to be able to talk about these things to each other. So we can help each other, support each other and build each other up. And so, do you not know, my children, that my love and desire to be unified with you is greater than any sexual desire or attraction? Now, that might be hard for people to understand, and it certainly was something I found very hard to understand until I had an experience of Jesus. You see, up to the point that we don't have an experience of Jesus, we hear about him, we hear about his love, we hear some wonderful testimony of somebody who was converted maybe in Lourdes or in Medjugorje and we say wonderful and it means very little to us. We know that in theory God loves us yet in practice we haven't felt any of the love and we have certain temptations, sins, passions. But when we experience God's love it's a whole other ball game. I know from my own personal life, when I began to experience the great power and infilling of the Holy Spirit, it was absolutely stunning. It was like I was in floods of tears, like lots of people as well who have the same experiences. My whole body was in a kind of ecstasy, passion of love. 
And I could feel that the crazy love, it was like Jesus was the one drawing me. And the crazy love of Jesus was like this magnet that was turned on full force and everything in me was drawn to him. And it put my whole body into a sort of an ecstasy, my mind, my body, my spirit. And after those type of experiences, it was very easy for me to realise that the passing gratification of any sexual act was nothing that the passion of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the energy of Jesus, the joy of Jesus, that it was so much greater than any sexual experience. And after that, I joke to people, but I say, you know, after that, um, I replaced porn with prayer. And it's true. Jesus became the new man of my life. And it was very easy to give up a lot of um, sexual sins that I'd been committing up to that point. Easy because I got the grace easy because Jesus showed me a love that was better, easy because when I started to pray and feel the power of Jesus and feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, it filled my whole body and mind and spirit with such love and with such joy that anything else would have just been second best. So um, that's what Jesus is saying, that his desire to be unified with us is greater. The passion he has for us is greater than sexual attraction. It's greater than lust. It's greater than all these things. And he says, I desire you to know me and to love me with your hearts and not just an intellectual knowledge. In other words, we're now in a season in the church where Jesus wants to pour out the Holy Spirit on lots and lots of people. For people not just to know about Jesus, that Jesus is God and that he loves us, but to know him personally, to know him intimately, to experience him, to love him, to fall in love with him. Imagine falling in love with Jesus that you love spending time with him, you love praying with him, you love talking to him, you love listening to him, you love consoling him, you love evangelizing, you love talking about him. That's what he's talking about. You love getting more inner healing. You love even going to confession because you know he'll give you more grace. You love going to mass because in mass he's unifying himself with you even more. It's the greatest union when you're receiving his body and soul and blood in mass. So he's asking that we would fall in love with him. And when we fall in love with him, as I said, the energy of Jesus will live in us and that is the life of Jesus that he wants for us and it's that you see that burns away so many of the other things. And so I desire you to experience my love through the power of the Holy Spirit and to fall madly in love with me just as I am in love with you. So through the power of the Holy Spirit, again anybody involved in healing ministry, we all know about the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the charisms of the Holy Spirit, the inner healing power of the Holy Spirit. Things like deliverance, like healing, like exorcism, like healing gifts, evangelization gifts, words of knowledge, um, all these things. But for these things to happen, Jesus desperately desires that we spend one-on-one -on -one quality time with him in prayer. And you see, I often say to people, if you're going for a job interview and someone asks you about your life, you'll tell them all the good things. Oh yes, I went to such and such university, I went here, went there. And if, for example, there's some shady things like you're off work for six months and you don't want anyone to know, people in job interviews have a, ha have a habit of kind of um, covering over that or hiding that or even lying at times um, blatantly. And with Jesus, it's the opposite. When you sit down with Jesus and he says, how are you? Tell me about you. It's the one place that Jesus is delighted when you tell him all the bad stuff. Jesus, I'm struggling with anger. Jesus, I'm struggling with lust. Jesus, I hate this person, I'm very angry at another person. He absolutely loves it when we're honest with him. Jesus, I'm a married man, I'm attracted to the girl next door. Jesus, I'm gay and I'm tempted to have sex with everybody. He absolutely loves it when we're honest. Jesus can do everything with an honest heart. It's like going to the doctor and you tell the doctor, look, this is what's bothering me, this is where the pain is, even if it's in a private area. And then the doctor can set about treating you. And so Jesus is saying this when it comes to the area of sexuality, when it comes to these areas which are very powerful in today's world today. He's saying, I know your beings that are made for one another. I want to purify your attractions. I want to purify the way you see one another. I want to purify this, the way you see one um, yourselves. I want to enter into these places where you're struggling with lust, you might be struggling with sex, you might be struggling with masturbation, pornography, struggling with all sorts of random hookups or something, I don't know, phone sex, every sort of thing exists nowadays. And Jesus is saying, that's okay, I understand it, I get it, let's talk about it. And so Jesus asks us to open our hearts. 
And the more we do that, the more we, we realize that Jesus' love for us is far greater than any love that we might have for these other passions or these other things. Imagine that Jesus is more passionate about us than we are about our greatest vice. And so with that mentality, let us not be afraid to bring our sexualities to Jesus. Let's not be afraid to bring our struggles to Jesus. And also then when we go to confession or to spiritual direction, it's true that not all priests are as good as um, each other in these areas. But having said that, it's when we allow the grace of Jesus into these areas that we really allow his healing power. And that's why, of course, in the charismatic renewal all over the world, there are healing groups, there are sharing groups, there are recovery groups, there's sharing. Because it's in the sharing as well that we learn how to love each other um, and we learn how to have compassion um, for each other. And we also learn how to be humble. When you meet someone and they tell you their struggle, afterwards you see them in a different light. Whereas before that, you might have thought that they had the perfect life and you wish you were like them. So there's great healing power and vulnerability helping each other. And especially in today's society, which is so, so sexual, Jesus is asking us that we not be afraid to let the full power of his love and Holy Spirit into these areas of our sexualities and intimacy so that he can fill us with um, his love and so that we can learn how to love each other and learn to love other people with his eyes, with his ears, with his touch, with his heart, and so that we can really and truly be fully integrated, if you like, apostles of love and of joy and of hope in the world. And when people will see us, they'll see these aren't these sort of repressed Catholics that are afraid of their shadow, that these people are spiritual people, these people are full of the Holy Spirit, you can talk about every aspect of life to them, they get it, they're, they're not afraid, and they've got something that we want. So let us pray through the grace of Our Lady of Medjugorje that more and more people will come to experience the love of Jesus and through this experience that then afterwards they will be able to change their lives, transform their lives and become glowing apostles of love, joy, peace and happiness for the whole world. Thank you for watching.